Cindy, you you're going to tell us a, a, a little bit about uh, stochastic terrorism. What what's uh, what is this? Yes. So let's talk about those two articles. Um, the first one published November 21st on Only Sky talks about this uh, relatively new expression, stochastic terrorism. Uh, the article defines it uh, like this. Uh, the stochastic terrorist is the person who uses mass media to broadcast memes that incite unstable people to commit violent acts. Um, we all have in memory uh, a recent uh, um, uh, court decision that was uh, in, the, in this area. Uh, the article goes on saying that one or more unstable people responds to the incitement by becoming a lone wolf and committing a violent acts. While their action may have been statistically predictable, the specific person and the specific act are not predictable yet. The stochastic terrorist then has plausible deniability. Oh, it was just a lone wolf. Nobody could have predicted that. Uh, and I'm not re responsible for what my uh, my people or my audience do. And that has been used a lot, um, especially since we have uh, uh, an extensive use of uh, social media. Then the, the second article um, published November 5th on um, another uh, uh, website, uh, sorry, I, don't, I, I missed that. Uh, they explain how stochastic, stochastic terrorism use, uses disgust as a, as a fuel. Um, the article uh, says propagandists have fomented disgust to dehumanize Jewish people as vermin, black people have, as subhuman apes, indigenous, indigenous people as savages, immigrants as animals unworthy of protection and member members of LG, uh, the lgbtq community as sexual deviants and predators who prey upon children uh, and the, the the specific use of this specific emotion uh, disgust is described very well in this uh, second article which i uh, suggest it's scientific american uh, I suggest you go and read it because it's very, very interesting. Um, guys, um, Theo, what do you think about this? Okay, well, really quickly, do you remember that I just mentioned how important education was when I read this stochastic, uh, I, stochastic terrorism? I had to Google it, uh, and I decided I speak Spanish. Let's see what it is in Spanish. Estocastico. Thank you, nonprofits. Now I had to learn two new words in two languages, thanks to you. And as... Cindy mentioned this is the idea that uh, you have one person who is telling people to do something and you're going to finally hit a lone wolf who is going to turn into the quotation mark missile that decides to perform the attack. So the guy who is telling people to do, to commit certain uh, acts uh, is not harmed, but the, the guy who decides, oh, yeah, this person is right, I'm going to kill somebody, uh, ends up in jail and, you know, the, the other person keeps giving the message until it hits another person. Tucker Carson and Ch Chaya Raychik, the guys that I mentioned in the beginning, are a very good example of people telling others to, you know, oh, no, the LGBTQ people are degenerate, they should be murdered, they should be killed. But you know what? You already mentioned Trump, and that guy is the perfect example. He started telling people, oh, no, the, I should have won. So they started to storm the Capitol. One of the most interesting things that have happened in the USA. And yeah, what happens? Well, we will talk about that in another time. But all those people, and you know, this is the reason, uh, I, I want to explain this. The reason why it's so hard to find those people who are going to become the missile who are going to perform the attacks is because everybody wants to be a free thinker. Nobody wants to admit that they are being manipulated or, quotation mark, inspired by others. So finding people who are going to accept that, oh, no, 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 I'm being manipulated or I'm going to follow whatever this person says, it's hard to find those guys. Just look at the guys who stormed the Capitol and they 
you would have never thought that people like them were going to do something like that because you know they they had good jobs they were not like your traditional conspiracy and i shouldn't use the word that i wanted to conspiracy crazy person so yeah it's hard to find those and yeah that, that, that's it yeah. that's what i wanted to say yeah blatant uh what are, what are your thoughts on stochastic terrorism uh, I think it's the result of late stage capitalism. Like we can talk about fascism and all that stuff, but all this is made possible because of capitalism, because capitalism results in everything being for profit, including politicians and media. So how do you make news, everyday news more profitable? Be provocative, stoke fear, confirm the disgusting biases of your cultivated audience. That's what it looks like, the constant bombardment of misinformation. The gays are grooming our children. Drag queens reading children books is a grooming event. Hospitals that perform gender-affirming care are mutilating our children. This is stuff that people are constantly delivered every single day on a loop. I actually saw, I believe it was on, um, it was on an online news network. They just did a compilation of Tucker Carlson repeating the exact same lines. And these clips were for months apart, but it was word for word. And he just kept going in about hospitals, mutilation, grooming, and it was just word for word. So this is stuff that people that don't have that online presence, you have to remember that grandma, your aunt, mom, most of these people aren't online. So they get their information from these mainstream media outlets. The problem with that is now all these mainstream media outlets have turned into Alex Jones. It's all conspiracy because they noticed that being a provocateur sells. Showing up in someone's manifesto gets you more money somehow. Yep. So until we get an actual opposition party, we're going to be stuck in this loop. It's just going to keep going. Yeah, and I, I think my thoughts on this, I, I think, are pretty simple. Um, cause a, I, I think you've all done such a really good job of talking about this. Um, and B also, I think, you know, a lot of our viewers here are, are going to understand what I say, because, um, if you hang out here at the ACA, you know, for, for even a little bit of time, you often will hear hosts, um, and guests criticize this, this type of, of fear mongering, right? Um, this type of rhetoric that is specifically meant to delegitimize a community just so that when violence happens to them, uh, on the whole, we don't feel so bad about it. This, this type of rhetoric is harmful, demonstrably. It leads to deaths. And that is why there are so many of us here uh, that will spend every second we can calling out this type of crap. Um, and I just, I just think we all need to do it. I, I love what you said, Blatant, where we need a strong, concerted effort against this. Because if we don't, it is going to lead to more violence. It is going to lead to more deaths. Um, and for, for everybody out there who's, you know, in that nice, cushy boat of not, not being, you know, in a category where you will be discriminated and told that you're not a real person in the United States, first off, congratulations, you did nothing for that. You were just born into it by, by random chance. Um, but it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop with dehumanizing trans people, right? It's going to continue. We'll, th th they'll start wherever they can, wherever they can gain traction, and then they will continue pushing it until it is absolutely everybody that doesn't, you know, stand in line and, and follow along with them. So... Um, I just, I really do think we need to continue calling this type of crap out and we shouldn't let up on it. And as long as there are going to be media personalities, um, like fucker Carl, uh, Tucker, sorry, I always, I don't know why that's weird. Freudian slip. Um, but that guy, as long as people like that are going to continue saying their atrocious things, we will, we will continue calling it out here for sure. Um, Teo was, was there anything else you wanted to, you wanted to say on this? Oh, you're muted, Teo. It's all right. It happens. Oh, yeah, of course. I had to do it twice in one show. Of course. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to take I was going to continue what, what you said. And I want to quote from the article something that I think is very important and we should mention. Let me quote. 
you can draw a straight line from the false and vile rhetoric about LGBTQ people spread by extremists and amplified across social media to the nearly 300 anti-LGBTQ bills introduced this year to the dozens of attacks on the community or community like those that this mass shooting took place on the eve of the transgender day of remembrance when we honor the memory of the trans people killed the prior year the uh, this deepens the trauma and tragedy for all in the LGBTQ community. And Cindy, I think that I would love to hear your opinion about this because I'm sure you have way more to say about this than me. And I think that this is the exact and most important thing why we're talking about this, these horrible attacks. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, there's there's a direct, direct link and that's why we are talking about this specific article uh, so that stochastic terrorism comes more into the language uh, when when we talk about those things. Um, but it feels to me like this is part of, of a, a bigger issue. Uh, it, people generally don't want to face the consequences of their actions. We see it online where the relative anonymity gives people the the, 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 the sense that they can attack other people uh, uh, as much as they want. We see it uh, in, in courts, we see it uh, on the roads, we see it everywhere. Uh, and maybe this is something we should teach children at a very young age. We often talk about teaching critical thinking and that's very important. But I think that um, taking responsibility for your actions, that's something uh, as much uh, as important as uh, uh, critical thinking. And I very strongly believe that it would make our society uh, drastically better. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And I think that is an absolutely beautiful way to wrap that up. Um, and so, you know, before we get to these final announcements, just a quick thank you to all of the viewers and listeners who have, who have uh, you know, joined us for, for this episode. We, we know that it was tough, um, but we're, we're happy that we have a space to highlight these important issues and, and talk about them. 